<laughs> it does not want to go on. Come here, you. Cooperate with me. You should not defeat me. You are a jar. In this episode of Adventures with Andy, who wins, Andy or the pickle jar? Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. Today, we're going to do some cram jar dyeing. Now, we've done something like this before in the past when we played with how dyeing yarn in a jar works when you've got a very large, that oversized, I think it's like gallon or something, mason jar that I had, and then just a regular size mason jar. And we used the same dyes to, to color the two in to see how it worked. And in the smaller jar, um, when we shoved that whole skein into it, that would, that's what would be called cram jar dyeing. And we ended up with a lot of resist, a lot of white spaces in it, beautiful skein. Today, we're gonna to do something similar, but we're gonna have a little twist to it. We're still gonna cram our yarn into the jars and we're gonna add little drops of, of food coloring as we do. But then, instead of filling the jars with plain tap water, we're gonna fill the jars with dye stock. Right now, in another we're, we're filming another video where we're doing the triangle color mixing exercise and we're using the Wilton Color Right red, yellow, and blue for that. So I thought it would be interesting to sort of play with some cram jar dye and using these same colors. So we're going to add drops of this to our yarn as we're shoving it into the jar. And then one jar, I'll mix up some just blue dye stock and we'll fill that jar with the blue, one in red and one in yellow, and just see how the three different skeins look when it's all said and done. Because the only difference is gonna be the color of the dye stock that goes into them. For our yarn today, we're using Knit Picks Swish Fingering. This is 100% superwash wool. It is 437 yards and 100 grams. I know this will fit in the mason jar, but another small twist here. My mason, all my mason jars except for this one are currently tied up in that color mixing uh, exercise video. So, I have a bunch of um, like sweet pickle jars and I think this one was either salsa or pasta. <laughs> um, we're going to use those and we're going to hope that the skeins will fit in them. It should, it should, it should. I, I have faith. Do you have faith, Chad? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence, confidence, people. This will work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I do have three skeins of the Swish Fingering. Each one has a different color of silicon zip tie in it just to help me keep them organized. Although I think we're going to be able to tell just by looking at the color at the end, which one's which. All right. So first up, I need to mix up our dye stocks. Come on in. We'll get to that. Going live to Andy Newton. On the scene. <laughs> On the scene. Yeah. For the triangle mixing exercise, I'm only using at most four drops of each color, but those are little teeny tiny micro skeins. These are full skeins, so it's going to take a lot more to get some color on them. All right, Assistant Chad, would you care to keep stirring that while I mix up? Okay, while I put the red in there and just let it set. 18, 19, 20. Some of those are big drops. Okay. We do have a yarn mop today. This is just a mini skein of platinum sock from, I do believe, Wool to Die For. 15, 15. Okay, now we need to top off these jars with water. Up to the rim here. How full? Um, well, remember we've got to leave room for yarn. Mm -hmm. So I guess just a third of that into each of these. That 
almost like Hawaiian punch or something. Don't drink it. It's going to have no flavor. Yeah. I mean, it won't hurt you because it's just food coloring and water, but it's going to have no flavor. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. I've been off a little stir stick on the yarn mop. All right. Our dye socks are all mixed up. We're just going to set them to the side for right now so that we can start working on our yarn. Okay. So what we're going to do is, well, first we're going to take the labels off. I don't want to do this with the paper labels on them. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit of the yarn in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a little. I see how cleverly you color coded the zip ties. Yeah. Not that I think it's really going to be all that necessary. I didn't have yellow, so I used orange. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Just gonna add some drops. We're gonna add the same amount to each one. Okay. So I will let you do that. How many? Um, I would think just one or one or two at a time because we're gonna add those drops in, and then we're going to put some more yarn in, and then add more drops. Two blue. Okay. And you can move this around to get it on other sides if you want. We just want to try to do these similar. Okay. You're not going to do blue on that one? I'll put blue on this one. Oh, so they're all getting all the colors. Yes, they're okay. all getting all colors. I guess that makes more sense. Two. And two. Okay. So now I'll turn these around. There's glue on the outside of this one. We just want to try to do them about the same so that what we're seeing is the difference in what we get mixing it with the dye bath. Mm -hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. You like it's like fresh drops of blood. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go ahead and just shove a little bit more of the yarn in. And turn it. Just because I don't want to get the dye on my fingers. Okay, and now put some more in. Okay. Some yellow. And I'm just going to add one drop of blue to each right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some more yarn in. Hopefully it fits. I have faith. Yep. Where's your faith, sir? Where's your faith? Okay. Did you get dye on you? I did. It's okay. All right. Um, what color did we use last time? Well, we did two yellow, and then you also dropped in one blue on each. Okay. Do another blue, blue, blue. You can use some too. Okay. No, I was just flipping over. I was just flipping over? Yeah. Put some yellow in. One yellow. That one kind of went in the top. Hmm? That one really kind of went in the top there. That's fine. I did that too with that. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I got red all over me. The red sprung a leak. You making a mess? Uh, I don't know that it was me. But that's why I have a yarn mop. Okay. Shove some more in. Flip it over. And we have lots of, uh, of figure eight ties in these. They had four already, and I added two more to each.
Okay, let's go ahead and just cram all the rest of it in. Okay, that one's crammed. See, I told you it'd fit. It's fighting to get out though. Well, that's why we have lids, mm -hmm. right? It says it will not be contained. Oh, yeah, try telling me that yarn. Okay, we're gonna put I think one drop of each yep. on the top. I guess you might have it out. No, 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 it's just that way I was able to keep it in mm -hmm. better. So one drop of each on the top and then we will fill it with the, with the dye stock. It's just messy. It is. Okay, so now just pour the dye stock in. You're going to want to go a little at a time yeah, don't and let it is. soak in, and it will actually start to compact down the. It's going to be messy. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a yarn mop. lid on this one. I do have the rest of that red. Later if I want it. Come on you. <laughs> I'm getting clever. <laughs> I'm getting clever. You're all out of yellow? I'm all out of yellow. Oh That's my goodness. Cool. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. Oh my gosh. That is just so cool. We do have some white still. Okay. I can start trying to put some more in there. And you can see as it get, gets wet, the yarn will actually compress some more. Awesome. And all the red's in. Now, remember, we don't have any vinegar. We don't have any sort of an acid component in these yet. This is superwash wool, so it'll strike faster even without the acid in there. It'll start to strike a little, but it's not going to set until we add the acid component. We're going to let these sit overnight though and just let everything work through. We do still have, okay, not on the red anymore. And it doesn't look like, you know, maybe a little bit on the blue. We've still got a little area that doesn't have any color yet. We've got this area on the yellow that definitely doesn't have any color. It's still dry. So we still got some room in there for a bit of, of vinegar. These have been setting overnight. Now it's time for us to put some vinegar. Two. That's just one tablespoon of vinegar. It's not a lot, but I'm not diluting it in a lot of water. We don't want it to be too acidic. And then put one, 
do three, four to start with. Let's move over to our yellow jar. Oh, these are on tight. <laughs> you get that for me, honey. You need the blue jar real quick. <laughs> Okay. Our right. yellow's looking pretty good too. Make sure this is on. Screen. I love the brightness of those colors. Two, three. And then our blue, also looking stunning. Got some gorgeous purples in there. One, two, three, four. Okay, it looks like we've got room for more water in here, so. Just the rest of this I'm putting in with our yarn mop. I'm only doing it by spoon until I can get it low enough to pour it. Because I know I'm messy. Squish that yarn mop down in there really good. So that it's got lots of access to that. Gonna let these sit for another 24 hours, and then we'll steam set them. All right, our cram jar yarns have been in their containers for a couple of days now. And it looks, as far as I can tell, like the dye bath is pretty clear. It's hard to tell when, you know, there's that much yarn in there. But we haven't put any heat on here yet. And we know that in order to dye yarn and have the have the dye set, we need protein fiber, dye, an acid component, and heat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it in the crock pot. I've got a little bit of water in here. It's not gonna cover the jars. It doesn't need to because the jars have moisture in them. So I'm just gonna put all the jars in here. Well, okay, I'm gonna put the three jars with the cream jar yarn in there. There's not enough room for four jars. So I'm going to take our little yarn mop out of its jar and just pour it in there completely loose. Got some interesting colors on it. And it will just be in that water, which is not going to be a problem because that water's not gonna get in our jars. All right, and I'm just gonna let this sit here, let it heat up, sit for at least 20 minutes on heat. I don't know, I would play it by ear, um, and then take it off the heat, let the jars cool, and then once everything's cool, I will wash the yarn. All right, these have been sitting out here in hot water for definitely over an hour because we went and grabbed some lunch while these were going. So we're going to go ahead and take these out. And the, the, can, the can ones are very hot, so I'm going to ask Chad to do this because he, he can handle the heat much better than I can. See, look at that. He's like, that's not hot. There you go. Okay. And we need a bin that we can put this in. Or I guess conveniently have an empty clean mason jar. 
All right, I feel good. Take that out. I know I could just grab tongs for that one. There you go. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. That's here, Grandma. If you can see that it definitely looks a whole lot different because the dye had not set. So when I put it in the water, all the dye that was soaked into that yarn just sort of spread out into the dye bath. And if I didn't know better, I think we have paint in the crock pot. No. Oh. You're steaming the labels off of the jars. <laughs> So that's why you got the different colors in there and stuff? Oh, well, yeah, that would make sense. It's loosening up the adhesive. Yep. Okay, I get it. I get it. All right, well, luckily, we're just even setting stuff in, in jars today. I'm going to move this over here a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to ask you, if you would not mind, Chad, to open these jars. The water's hot, but it's not boiling. It's not scalding. <laughs> this lid does not want to open. No. I wonder if that's the one that cross threads all the I time. I think so. I'll have to go back and check the video when I'm editing it. Okay. But what I want to see is... That looks pretty clear. Yeah. Our dye bath is clear on that one. And check this one. Yeah, this one's clear too. Even sucking out of this area where we had this really dark green. Yep, it's clear. And the last one. Also clear. So, yeah. Hot. Hot. I don't know how you can handle this. <laughs> so hot. I'm such a wuss. All right, the jars feel cool to the touch, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the yarn out. Go wash it! Let's see. Ooh! Okay, next up the yellow. Ooh! Got a lot of green on this one. And the blue. Ooh, that's some pretty, pretty colors. And here's our finished yarn. We've got our yellow, red, and blue. And you can see that just by changing the color of that dye bath that we poured over them, we completely changed how the yarn looks. If I had to choose, this one is my favorite. I love the, you know, the oceany feel of this one. Um, the yellow one is a, a very bright, cheery color as well, and the blue in this one it, it became very a very calm, sedate color palette when mixed with those other colors on it. Whereas the yellow, everything became really kind of vibrant. We've got some patches here where. It, it's we've got some brown going on um, that's just from the the colors mixing together getting all three of them together like that but it's still it's very bright and vibrant and energetic whereas our blue over here we ended up with more green and some purple tones and yes we've got some brownish green too um, but it's it's more calming and sedate and then there's our red, which I'll admit I kind of expected more vibrancy from this one than what we got. Um, the red I washed the day before the other two um, because the red jar and the red yarn felt cool to me. And I washed it and there was some, some red bleeding. And when I went out to get the next jar, both the yellow and blue jars, felt warm to me and the yarn felt warm. So I let them cool overnight 
um, cause I didn't want to shock the yarn. And I don't know if that meant that more of the dye ended up striking on these or if it's just because red can be a bleeder. It really can. Or possibly because all of the red struck up here and very little made it down here because red does strike faster than yellow or blue. I'm not sure which, but we do have, you know, a much darker color up here. And then down here, we've got this really pale, sickly orange. And yeah, I, I did not much care for that. How about you, Chad? Which, I go back and forth between the blue and the yellow. It's yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah, how come? I, those are the two that I like the most. Yeah. And the blue with its ocean look, mm -hmm. but also the yellow just has a vibrancy to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't care for the red either? No. How come? Again, it's got that pastel tone to it, mm -hmm. which just doesn't lend itself to me liking it. Yeah, no, that's, that's okay. I, I have to agree. Um, I mean, it's, it's really, really pale here. If it had all been like this, that I think would have been really cool and on par with the other two. I honestly might end up going back and doing a video where we touch up the colors on this red where it's really pale like that and see if we can't get it to be a more uniform colorway. Get the spray paint out? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it does show you that you know, in cram jar dyeing, you know, the colors will spread and they'll mix together. And depending on what your overall dye bath color is, whether it's just plain water, which gives you just the blending of the colors that you've got on a white palette, or a dye bath that has a color of its own that is gonna mix with all of those colors, it completely changes what you end up with. Of course, we still have to see how these knit up. So let's take a look at our swatches. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, even worked up my favorite one is this. I just, I love how that worked up. That's just so pretty. And it just screams oceans and coral reefs to me. We, you don't really see a whole lot of the purple. It really blends in more and looks like more blue and green, but we do have those little pops of the red that show up and they don't show up in big long streaks for the most part. We've got one there, but mostly they're just a stitch here or there in places, or they get really muted into more of a an orange, almost brown color. And then our yellow, now this one just goes to show how color pooling can go based on your needle size and your stitch count, it looks like there's this faded section right here because it's bright here and it's bright here and then it just looks faded right here. But if you look over here on this edge where it's trying to roll, you can sort of see a little bit where it looks kind of faded here as well. It's really hard to notice a swatch is not going to roll. And I really just need to come up with a better solution for how to show you all this. But uh, yeah, that I think is, it's a really sort of interesting, almost bizarre optical illusion, but it's a much brighter swatch than the blue. This, the blue, it just looks very sedate and calming. Whereas the yellow one looks really bright and puppy and happy and then we have our our red one and this one surprised me because if you remember i didn't like it in the skein because we've got this section here that looks really washed out where it just didn't get very much of the the dye to it but when it's worked up like this it blends in so much you don't even really see that I mean, over here on the yellow, we can see a section where it looks all faded, but on the red one, I mean, here on the edge a little bit, but overall, not as much even as, as it did on the yellow. And it really just sort of all blends in together nicely. And to be honest, 
I kind of like it. I, I honestly thought I was going to have to go back and color correct these really pale sections, but I'm not sure I want to do that now. I, I'm going to have to think about it. I kind of like it and I think it all blends together really well. This is why I tell everybody and I've been telling people over on the Chemnitz Lab group when they've posted pictures of yarn that they're like, I hate this. It didn't dye the way I wanted it to. Should I, I'm, I think I'm just going to have to over it. I'm like, have you worked up a swatch yet? Because until you've worked it into a swatch and see how the colors really do mix together, you don't really know how it's going to look and you can't really tell if you're going to like it. That's the one thing I have learned from knitting all of the swatches of the yarn that I've dyed. And I'm glad that I made that decision to knit swatches for each of these. It takes time. That's okay. Um, but it has really taught me to look at a skein of yarn with different eyes and to know that it's going to look completely different when it's worked up from how it looks just in the skein. Chad, what do you think of them in the swatches? I think they turned out good and the red one did look better in a swatch than it did in this skein. Mm -hmm. So, which one's your favorite now that you've seen them? I still prefer one? the blue one. <laughs> well, the yellow one a close second. Yeah. The red, red one has not eclipsed them. No. I think, for me, I mean, blue is definitely still my favorite, but I think the yellow and the red switch places for me. Originally, I was like, oh, no, red, I do not like you. Let's forget that you even happened. Um, we're going to have to do some color correction. But then, once I worked them up, I like the red a little more than I like the yellow. I still like the yellow. Like I said, it's a very bright, happy color. Um, but yeah, hands down, the blue is still definitely my favorite. The red one is very autumnal. You think? with the Because the red kind of looks more pink mm -hmm. in it than a deep crimson red. Mm -hmm. And you think that's autumnal? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I, I would think we need more brown for that, but that's just my personal opinion, and Chad's completely entitled to his, to his opinion. Aren't you? Mm -hmm. You can like what you like, you can think what you think, that is okay. And so can all of y'all out there. So why don't you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of these three skeins of yarn and this dyeing technique. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you are more than welcome to give it a thumbs down. That is entirely your prerogative. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss anything that we try here. You never know, we could introduce you to a whole new way of doing something that you've not thought about before. Or just maybe show you something that you've tried before. I don't know. Regardless, I want you to have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Bye, everybody. Say bye, Chad. Bye, everybody. Bye.